Happy Thursday, everybody. It is the big thing. We got some stuff to talk about. The SAG strike. Not going to happen again. Thank goodness, because they ratified the agreement yesterday. Thank goodness. So we'll discuss that. We'll discuss some movies that we've seen. I saw Wonka. Roxy saw Wonka. Um, there's some other movies that are out there right now. What are some of our favorites thus far that we've seen? We're not going to make a top 10 list, but we're going to talk about some of the things that we've seen. Uh, what else? It is Ryan Reynolds talked about some Deadpool stuff. We have uh, Avatar 3 had a trailer, had a title, but apparently that's BS. We'll talk about how great Godzilla Minus One is. I'll talk, tell you about my trip that I took to Tennessee in 24 hours. I took a 24-hour trip to Tennessee. I'll talk about that. We'll talk about Roxy Stryer's new stand-up comedy career. We'll mm. talk about Roxy Stryer's neighbor. Uh, we'll talk about Brett Sheridan's wonderful shirt. So that and more on today's show with myself, Roxy, and Brett. If you're brand new to the channel, you've never been here, we're trying to build up that community, everybody. So hit that button. We're trying to get to 200,000, even faster than we got to 100. But we need you guys to help out. And yes, Roxy will be talking about some TV also, right? Sure. Right. <laughs> so we got some TV stuff. We got some movie stuff. We got some other stuff. So thanks for joining us on the show. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere podcasts are found. It's the big thing. Brett, Roxy, let's do it. Welcome back, one and all, to the grand show of them all. It is the big thing. Me, Roxy, Brett, us. <laughs> um, it's nice to have everybody back. What? You guys kicked me off again last week. You <clears throat> kicked off? No, you didn't get kicked off. Both did. did. You, you both said, got kicked did off. You? <laughs> no, you called. You said, you said, can we do it at this time? I'm getting very busy, Roxy, these days. I'm and, and then you asked me to change the time for today, and what did I say? You, yes, about a half an hour. <laughs> we still started at 1 o'clock, uh, which is not your fault at all. Um, Although you told me I hexed you guys. With it. Yeah, you walked in, you said, are we ready to go on time? I said, yeah, you are. I'm having this stupid problem. I've had a really nice one of our subscribers trying to help with the fact that he's like, he's, he wrote. He was very nice when he wrote it. He's like, I'm not trying to overstep, but sometimes I notice it gets glitchy. And, you know, and I was like, dude. You're not overstepping. Whatever you can suggest, because it's driving me crazy. And sometimes when I'm editing and I don't see it, and, then it, and it's like the stupid glitch thing it happens with Capes and Cows a lot. But his suge suggestion is too is this computer. I need a new computer. I understand that. Can't do it yet. I don't have the funds to do a computer yet. But we're trying everything that we can. So Brett had a couple of ideas and fixes beforehand. But Roxy was like, "Are we going to start on time?" And at the time, I was like, "Yep, we are." And then she jinxed us. So yes, there you that go. is my fault. That's what happened. The new computers, the ones that you really need, they're like ten thousand dollars. I mean, they're so expensive. What's the one that we were looking at? What's the, what's the, the price on it? If you get a PC, it's not that bad. The problem is if you like Macintosh, is <laughs> yes. the yeah yeah they're you know. But you could get away with one that's about three or four grand. Yeah yeah. I, I don't, don't know about that. It just don't have it at the moment, but Christian, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, tell me <laughs> what. <laughs> I'm thinking about doing out. this all day. Okay, yeah. no question for you. You said that already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys last week you did an awesome job. You talked about always Lola. I wasn't yes. there, and it was so nice. Yes. But you didn't say anything about me, and all the fans noticed that you didn't say anything about I me. I did, and you know what I did say about you? I talked. You said and rocks. No, I talked about you for about. Because I realized that after I did that thing, because I thought I was just already talking about you, because I was. You think I'm trash? No, I was. Winston, you think I'm crap? Can, you, can I finish? You asked me a yeah, question. Okay. I'm answering your question. So Winston then came on the show on Friday, I think it was, or whatever. It was, or we taped for no, we did like an extra one that we were supposed to do. He was supposed to do the one that you guys missed last mm -hmm. week. Yeah. So if you notice, we didn't do a show. You did no show. We did no show because because no. we are solidarity. Show. No, yeah. no, I wish Winston and I did a show. And then the computer glitched. Mm. It shut down the whole entire program, and it didn't save it. I talked about you for maybe ten minutes mm. on that episode. Yeah. I also, yeah, I did. Interesting and story. I did. <laughs> yeah, and I talked on the about the episode, the I one know. episode that never aired. I know. We <laughs> talked about it, it for a bit, and then we did Capes and Cows, and we couldn't, we couldn't fit it in there. So I was like, you know what? I'll talk. To, we'll talk about it on the show. I thought you were great. I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't lie to you. Mm -hmm. I thought you were great. And I called you though, and I said this other thing too. I like right away. I'm like, this is bullshit. 
You yeah, did. Yeah. And you're like, you didn't watch that. the trailer? And I said, <laughs> I said, no, I didn't. I didn't want to know what it was about. But then, as you said, don't worry, I'm in flashbacks. And you are. I thought you held the whole thing together. The one thing, and this has nothing to do with you, you, your performance, and this is always, I say this about everything, from Beverly Hills 90210 and everything. It's maybe because I know you guys. You guys are supposed to be playing like 18-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you guys aren't 18. I am. Yeah. You are? Soul. you are. You mm-hmm. are. Yeah. But, but it's it's such a little little. Complaint. You think I should have gotten Botox before? No, I'm glad that you, don't touch your face. <laughs> Leave your face alone. How am I going to keep getting cast as an 18 year old? Leave then? your face alone because Bill Burr says it best. It's like they haven't perfected it yet. You can clearly tell. What what age you guys think I look? In that in that movie, well, I'd say mid 20s. Hmm. Yeah. In life. I mean, I know you. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough when you know, and it's also. Tough, yeah. Uh, it's tough when you're an old guy because you don't want somebody to look 18. We did get, we've gotten <laughs> like almost all great reviews, but we did get one review early on in film festivals that was like, how the fuck am I supposed to believe these crows feed having motherfuckers? Are wow. Wow. <laughs> they really went that deep? <laughs> they, yeah. they, I don't know if they call this motherfuckers, but they did call us crows feed having people. Wow. <laughs> Do you Botox? You can tell me. No, I've never. See that one? I'm but not. I, <laughs> I love this, how subtle you went. You You're can like, tell me. You no, tell because me you have very, you have you have very nice skin, and you don't yes. have. I have wrinkles. a lot of wrinkles. I do. Yeah, if you look at close. this point, I like them, but I, at some point, I might get rid of them. I've never touched anything on my face. Don't. I've never even had braces. I never have done don't. anything. Just don't. Well, just I age, said that, man. and oh, I, I found. Oh, I dye my hair. Everybody whatever. knows that. I will say, I found out that a lot of people I know do Botox, and you can't tell any totally. difference. Totally, it's when you start cutting. What's when you start cutting in? I agree with. I don't know, dude. If you do it too much, it does this thing. I think I, you're I thinking of uh, filler. Yeah, filler. No, are, I know somebody who's who Botox. You can't move your face. And yeah, I talked, that's tough. I talked to somebody who I know who's done it, and so like they realized that they were trying to do something and they couldn't move their face. Yeah, the biggest fun. one is in the forehead. That's the one that I think is fun. Don't. It, the touch problem is your if face. you're an actor. If you are not an actor or a somebody who needs to have facial expressions, and I don't give a shit what you do mm. to your face. Do whatever you want to your face. But it is difficult now when there are the people, men and women, who are getting a lot of Botox and you're trying to understand what they're feeling on camera and they're giving you Can't tell. They're, they're giving, giving you nothing. You nothing. Giving I'm you glad nothing. that Nicole Kidman backed off on it because she was starting to get pretty that is a good thing about Botox. Apparently, it goes away. You can you can pull back on it because she was starting to get to that place. There's a lot of the people that sometimes it's like, I just I don't know. For me, I find I, I, mean, I guess I've always found older women more attractive anyway. To be honest with you, and like eighty, like eighty, like mm-hmm. a good eighty. Like 86. what age do you think is the hottest? The hot? No, I'm just talking about you mean older wise. I've been mean, just saying when I was younger. Just in general, what do you think is the most attractive woman age? Between. I mean, it's different. There's some women who look I mean, between 30 and 35 and 49. Yeah, I know. You can't say <laughs> under your wife's age. That's well, she's the, not, but she, that's definitely. She's, no, she's I was going to be like, oh, you're going to be 30 to 40. My wife's 45. Ah! My, my wife my wife looks like she's in you her both have so. smoke show wives. Yeah, my but wife. she's got to yeah. get some work done. My wife or your wife? No, my, mine is no, mine's begging me to do stuff. One of those stuff. things would be an absolutely unacceptable. Either way. Yeah. Either no, way. my wife's begging me to get Botox and just a little really? filler here and stuff. Oh, and herself? I keep saying the same no, thing. Don't I'm like, no, 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 no. She's begging you to do it or she's no, begging? No, for her. She wants She's to do like, it. come on, I just need a little bit. And she's got like kind of deep this thing or whatever. I'm like, I like that. That's cute. Leave I don't, you know. Yeah. And she wants her lips a little fuller. Oh, you guys are absurd. No, it's just don't, but it's because it's just because I don't Fine, want Fine. I've had it. No, <laughs> yeah. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. <laughs> anyway, well, I'll tell you what you have had. Some laughs on stage. <clears throat> no, come on. You were, we did. Listen, that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. So we did a stand up show on um, Saturday and it was really fun. Thank you to everybody who came out. I'm trying to. I've already got my set, and I'm waiting for Flappers to send the whole show because then I'll put it up on on the uh, on Patreon. But they have it. Yeah, we recorded it. You have your set on tape. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna. It's digital now. We don't do tape anymore. But um, but yeah, they it's put it be, on the digits and it's on Patreon. People are gonna see it, Rox. And you were really good. And you shouldn't be. You were really really good. The only thing, the funny thing is, you were like, well, you keep. Bringing, ah! You, you keep bringing up that you were like, don't talk to me to everybody, which is, uh, everybody does that. It's awesome. I really did. <laughs> I know you did. But the only thing, the one thing that I was just, that I was a happy embarrassed for you because it was hilarious. The the guy from Flappers comes in who's the sound engineer <laughs> and he goes to Roxy. He's like, hey, so like, what, you know, what do you, he has to like, what, what do you need or, yeah. or what? And she goes, why, 
or are you ready? She's like, why are you asking me that? He's like, and he goes, he looks at her, he goes, because you're the MC. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was the best. It was the best. He's like, he looked at me like this. Well, Christian walked in. And I couldn't even make words. I was just staring at you. Like, mm-hmm. why did you do this to me? And then everybody else I knew, but he, and then I, I, this is a, a fucked up thing to say out loud, but you were having the top tier people were coming through. Yes. The, and I had to remove myself because I knew I actually would pass out if I had to talk to anybody. <laughs> so yeah. I was standing in the hallway with Ellis, with Ellis, yeah. who's talking me down and up. Yeah. He's, he's, he's talking me up and he's talking me down. Right, right, right. Because <laughs> um, I actually was like having a moment where he said to me, the only thing you can do wrong right now is not go on stage. Right. And I was like, I don't know that I can do this. I was really, 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 really scared. It's only because you never did it. I you, Because I can tell you this. Because you performed exactly how I knew you would. Because you know how to talk like in front a of people. Scared little lamb. <laughs> no, but you know no. what you did. You know what you did though that I wasn't expecting you to do, and I wouldn't have asked you to do it because I didn't need you to. The jokes in between. I tried yeah. to. Yeah, you yeah, were great. yeah. I tried to and listen. You wrote them yourself. I listened, and then I, well, Ellis helped me with the stuff at the top. Yeah, I I gave him like. The, your biggest nightmare. This is probably both your biggest nightmare. I call Ellis. We go to get coffee. And I was like, let me pull out my notepad <laughs> of jokes that I've had in mind <clears throat> for oh, no, years. And no, you no. tell me how to make these work. Yeah. It's just like, it, what's worse than somebody seeing you down and, and explaining the jokes that are in their no, head No, but you? you're someone who you're working with. I understood it. And you could tell, like, you could definitely tell they were your jokes and Ellis helped you flare them up. You could see the beginning of it. But yeah, structurally, it, I didn't know how to tell a joke. But you used your skills as an actress to do exactly that. You talked to people. You did what you had to do. You did five minutes up top or maybe six, whatever it was. I don't know because I couldn't have seen a light it if it came on. <laughs> whatever it was, you did it. You hit your moments. You didn't over. And this is something that I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. I'm telling you the truth. For people who don't do stand-up, what they normally do is they step on their jokes. They don't hold for their laughs. They don't. You didn't do that. You waited. You like. You really like. You you were. You would deliver it, and you. I was like, I'm watching, going, okay. Well, she has never done this before, so she might step on a few things. I was like, she, I look at Kate, but she's not stepping on shit. Yeah, there you was a great. couple times that I wish that I like. Kate asked me afterwards, and people were like, "Did you hear those laughs?" I did not. I I did not. I don't know how yeah. the reaction was. I genuinely was so afraid. I can't remember the whole night. I was so afraid. Do you know that subconsciously you did hear the laughs though? <clears throat> I. And, you think so? Yeah, I know that you did because if you. Because you didn't, because you felt when you were up on stage, you felt like, okay, I'm, I'm doing it, and you, you never, you were never like, this is going terrible. You, you would have known because, oh yeah, you would read the, you're reading the energy when you're up there. The energy was pushing you through it, like the, like the, the laughs were pushing you through it. I can't believe this is something you guys do. I cannot <laughs> believe it. Afterwards, Kate was walking me in my car, and I said. That was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And she said, you buried your mother. And I said, I stand by what I just said. <laughs> it, was, it was so difficult. Like, it, it, the there's something unlike anything. I mean, I've been in plays, obviously. I have been on uh, hosting live. Yeah. I've done improv. I've done all the things on stage or on camera that I, a person could do other than porn, I guess. Uh, but I've never done stand-up. Like, I have nothing even close to right. that. And it's such a different beast. So uh, for me, it was like, this is uh, all those skills combined it's like it, having to have a, an opening monologue that you are ready to throw out if something else mm-hmm. happens. <laughs> I don't understand just like how you gain this skill set. And the fact that Ellis was coming through, he had done two shows prior, was oh, wow. coming through and then was going to, he had, I think in, um, where is it, Hermosa or whatever? Oh, yeah, yeah. Com- so Ma- he, Magic Comedy. He's coming from there. Then he was coming through to Burbank and then he was going to go to the comedy store. Yeah. And we were like a, a stop on his night. And I was like, how could you do this four times tonight? I would, I, well, remember that's to him. It's it's second nature. Yeah, yeah. And I don't you, get you, how that's possible. Well, you like, you've done it. You've done it once. <laughs> so like, if you the more, yeah, but no, you did. No. You really did. You really you host you hosted a show. You hosted a comedy show and you did it well. I'm not and I wouldn't like if I you know me if I was if I was like look you probably could have done some things better. You bailed on some stuff. You didn't commit. I don't have any of those notes for you. I had those like there was a <sighs> like, there was a, there was a. Joke, I won't say of who, but there's somebody we were talking to on our, everybody I think had really great sets. Um, but there was somebody on, on our show that was doing really well and had a joke that I was talking to with. And I was like, well, when you do that joke, just remember, like, emphasize that word because it'll hit. And when they did it, they brushed right over it and it, and it, 
the people that were entertained by it, but if they would have I'm so held, curious what you're talking about. If they would have held on it, <laughs> you would have gotten a bigger laugh. I know it. I know they would have gotten a bigger laugh. And they brushed over it, and I was like, oh, you should have just held. I didn't have those notes for you because, like, you did, and you came up with that one for Brett, like, about in in between with the thing with the, what what, what was it that you said? Do you remember the actual line about his, about the hot comedians? Or? I think I said, um, you know, I've always been told that you can't be extremely hot and extremely funny. We know which one I'm going for, but there's a loophole. You can be extremely funny and have a smoke show of a yeah. wife. Yeah. Something it, was like that. Ver- it was very well executed. It was so good because yeah. I thought you were going to say I was hot. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I went, oh. Yeah, it was, I was like, that was good. <laughs> that was good. And Kate and I looked at each other like, and how good was Chris Carr? Oh, I thought wonderful. she was hysterical. Chris Carr was crazy. I thought she was hysterical. And that, I feel bad because I think afterwards I was like, holy shit, you were actually so funny. Yeah. And that's not a nice thing to say to somebody because I think it implies that I didn't think she would be funny. But I just had no idea what to expect. Yeah, of course. It's, and, and I understand it. Like it was, what yeah. I liked about her is that uh, she's so like – a very you could tell just very sweetheart not like you, she doesn't seem filthy or anything like mm-hmm. that but she put just the right amount yep. of filth in yeah. there she didn't do dirty for dirty's sake it it fit with her demeanor she's like oh my gosh you're so sweet and oh i can't believe she said that yeah, you know is. but she's she's a, another one where she knows you can tell she has experience yeah. with the, what what she was saying in the way that she crafted her jokes and she's very likable and that was the thing that worked too i mean i thought everybody was like Everybody had. She a, is very likable. Yeah, yeah. I thought everybody. I mean, Kate had a fantastic set. She crushed. Everybody did such a yeah. great job. Winston Coy. Because uh, I, I, my number one concern was that I was going to fuck up the show for everybody. Right. So <laughs> the fact that everybody did a good job, I was like, I think that it was making me feel less pressure because I was like, oh, I can't fuck this up for them. No, but you're also adding to it. You don't realize that the the host. This is what I tried to tell you. The host adds the energy to the show and gives you the vibe. That's why they're called the host. They're mm-hmm. hosting the night because like. When the host is off and the host is not believing in themselves and the host is not getting the energy up, the rest of the show suffers. You were doing exactly what you were supposed to be doing. like, And you didn't spend – you had a couple jokes in between comics and you didn't spend like a whole like five, six, seven minutes to like, oh, I have this new bit that I want to do that I'm now going to do a new set that I should have done in, May, in the beginning. Sometimes hosts do that all the time. They'll do like – They'll have their they'll have their bit that they probably should have done in the beginning, mm-hmm. and then they come up with a new thing that they want to try, and they don't know if it's proven or not. And they do like five I more minutes. Try anything, <laughs> yeah, but you did try new. You did, did try, try things, something. and knew, and it was all really good. But you were talking about everybody else, and then I brought it back to me. Everybody no, else was good, though. Everybody, everybody else, else was great. stellar. It was really cool to see, and it was. I feel like not big things centered. No, like it, that's what I liked about yeah, it. Yeah, it felt like just a really legit comedy show. I was very genuinely laughing at times. And uh, yeah, I thought it was awesome. Brett, you were on fire, my dude. Oh, you're I mean, so he, good. I, like, you're so good. I, I, the, every time that you would pull out your phone, I thought I was going to pee myself. Oh. Like, I don't know how you do that. He's another one, though. He's getting way more confident up there. Because he's now, you've done more stand-up Within the last year than I think you've done in like 10, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you talk about being nervous about it. The my first time I was going to go back was that Houston show mm. where we were flying. And I called my wife and I'm like, I can't go. Yeah. I'm going to tell him I'm not, I'm sick and I can't go. And I almost canceled the flight to go to Houston for the thing. And I ended up doing and did two shows and it went well. And yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm with you. I, I got off the stage and you're like, great job. I'm like, what did I say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you, right before, I don't know if you saw this, Christian, but right before Brett was about to go on, I was like, um, I, I think I turned to him and said something like, you ready? And he was like, turn to, point to Kate and was like, Kate first. And I was like, no, no, you're first. And he was like, let me see that. And takes the paper and was like, oh, now? And it was like. Well, I just asked Kate. I go, are you next or me? And she goes. Me and I thought she said me, but I think she said you. I don't know. It was a daze, but I was like, "Are you guys no. messing with me?" But you knew. But look, here's the other thing that is beneficial, right? <clears throat> you knew that because it was our show, yeah, right. And so the majority of people were either big thing fans or you know or whatever. Maybe they were, they were friends of mine, or friends of, or whatever it was, and they were there to see you guys. So you have that cushion when you're doing a show, especially for yourself doing a show. Like a lot of people in that audience, most of them, I'd say like there was almost like 95, 100 people there. So like I would say, you know, 75% of them knew who you were, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's a great cushion to have yeah. when you're doing a show for the first time. Oh, definitely. I, I, there's zero chance I could do this if they, I didn't feel like people knew me, especially because I knew I had that to fall back on. Like yeah. one of the main things I was asking Alice, if I get up there and I just see stars and just some fucking tapped or whatever 
what what can I do? And one of the things dance. is mm-hmm. I know who they they know who I am. Right. Yeah, dance. Yeah. That's what he advised. Run. He said, "Do yeah, a, dance. A, a ballerina thing." Yeah, I thought about it. You should have. Yeah. No, but um, <laughs> and yeah. I, I would say as a whole too, what I found was great that there wasn't a lot of pandering to the big thing no. crowd. People were doing bits. They weren't doing callbacks to the show or something like. There weren't a lot of nerdy references or things like that. They, I, I loved that about it, and I also <clears> it's why the reason why I focus more on stand up on this show because we did the first show we did was. Stand up and then the podcast. Yeah, which was the way that we did it that night. I didn't. I didn't mind. I liked it. Where we did you and I think it was you and uh, Brett, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so it was the three of us and the for our and, show. And, and then we was talked. Kate not with us. Kate, Kate, oh, was, Kate was with us too. So then we did. We did like little Remember sections. Kate was a little tipsy. She was. We did like little <laughs> sections that I thought was fun and a kind of Q and A thing. And then when we did the New York show and. Like Double Toast are some of my favorite. Both Martin and Corey are like some of my favorite people in the world. They're hilarious, um, but we don't do shows with them all the time. And it was like kind of a fun. It's, it felt like more like something we would do like Comic Con together. Like we'd be like, yeah. oh, these guys have been doing stuff for so long. And Mark and Christian and crossover. And even Mark doesn't do this show really a lot, right? It's just he's just one of my best friends. So it was like we had just done this stand up show at in, in New York Comedy Club, which I thought was great and then we did the the other thing was that that would be great at like a a con or something else too where we did something else it doesn't really feel like it matches so then when flappers was like hey do you guys want to do a show do you want to is that how that happened flappers was like hey we have some things available in december do you want to do one because i wasn't planning on doing any more shows for the rest of the year at least for a while until we built up the audience more but then jp who runs our show we were we were our live shows he was connected to the email too and i said i don't know maybe we just do run one in in la and let's let's try to do it and, and i was like, again yeah. i remember you had mentioned at the time you and steph had mentioned that you wanted to all right let's yeah. talk about so, it yeah, you want to talk about it let's talk go ahead tell us, so tell us he, how this happened here's the thing everybody knows this steph is my best friend i love steph more than anything steph and i have very different personalities and i am more type a and steph is funnier that's just like kind of what our dynamic is. So the last time when Koi was hosting and Steph and I were on stage for, she did, uh, you guys did a, a mini Sith or something, right? With yeah, yeah, me, Mike, and Steph. Right. right. So we we had gone on for big thing. You guys did a Sith. And so Steph and I were both on stage for a total of like five minutes. And when, But we were there all night and we were watching everything and learning. And she was like, man, I feel like we would have nailed this. Like we really could host the show. Nothing against Koi. She just wanted us to yeah. like be hosting the shows. And she was like, I've seen Ken and Makuga do it together before. Like it's fun when there's the mm-hmm. duos doing Christian show. So I was like, oh yeah. And she was like, we're supposed to do things in life that scare us. This would scare me. I really wanted, she said, I really want to do this. This would be so fun. And I was like, yeah, for sure. So then you messaged us asking if we would do it. And Steph and I are on the phone. Yeah. And Steph's like, I really want to do this. I'm like, okay, babe, let's do it. Okay. And she's like, let's respond in the chat at the same time. So we d- wrote something in the chat, the same words, the same mm-hmm. time, something like on it or like whatever it was, just right. like, you know, thing one and thing two. So we write that. And then the, the literal next thing that I know is Christian puts out a flyer. And I'm on it, and Steph's not. <laughs> so I call. I say to Christian, "You forgot Steph. Why did you take Steph off the flyer?" Right. Thinking Christian's a dickhead. <laughs> and <laughs> Christian says, "Steph bailed. She didn't tell you." <laughs> and she had a really legitimate reason. Obviously, she had a family wedding, but she. Lit- d- this is what it is to have a best friend who's the funny one and not the Type A one. Right? Because she was like, "Oh, can-? she asked me, she goes, can you move the show?" And I go. I can't. Yeah. It's the only time the club is given it to me. But she completely just didn't say anything to me because she, Steph is in she like. Didn't think about it. You yeah, know, she didn't, she didn't think about it, of yeah. course. So I messaged her and was like, D- are you not doing the show? And she was like, oh, girl, you're going to crush it. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> no, answer the question. <laughs> I called Christian. I was like. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no. And Christian was like, do not bail on me. I already put out the flyer. And I was like. I'm, I've never bailed on anybody about no. anything in life. You, so. and, and to your credit, within seconds of me saying that, you were like, okay, I won't, but I'm not loving this, and now I'm scared. Yeah, and, I was like, yeah. I'm not going to bail on you. I'm actually going to shit my pants. So, yeah. Like, this is not something, A, I ever thought I would do, ever thought I was capable of But don't of lie to me, and I want you to answer without thinking. I'm just going to ask you I right now. I think I have now. the same question. No, wait, but for, you can ask Are the you other question. Are you happy you did it? Are you happy you did it? Yes. There you okay, go. That's but me. I do yeah. not think that I would be happy to do it again. You, you would do it again. 
I, I you, oh, even after because uh, we were texting afterwards and I she was in that place yeah. of like oh I don't can't remember and I thought the next day I felt sick afterwards. you would have like let that so we were like we're gonna do another so now this is why this is why I, I do know you too well this is what will happen I'm gonna go okay because you think I'll have FOMO which I will have FOMO you will 100 have FOMO <laughs> and I'm gonna because you know you can do it because the thing is I if I'm gonna say okay well, flappers reached out they want to do another one and I need you to host you would say. I'd probably say yeah, but yeah. I wouldn't do it. Happily. <laughs> yeah, but that's I'm just kind only. of a yes well, That's girl the, in how general. I do stand up. I don't do it happily. If, no, because that's the difference. If you if if it was something that you hated and mm -hmm. you were like, I will never do that again, then you would say no to me right away. But because I know you, you would say, I cannot ever do that again. This is more of but like, like what? What have I ever said that to? No, there are things, but there is. There I'm are a certain performer, things. so there's nothing performance wise. Right. Again, other than like things that I'm like, I'll never fucking do. But that. either way, so it, you were really good on it for sure, and like, the, like I didn't know because I had added Ellis because Ellis came in. It's Ellis like, hey, you know, um, I'm because I had told him that if he was around, I want to give him a spot, but I hadn't talked to him about it, so I had planned. Yeah, you said nothing. Well, because I originally had planned to do thirty minutes. Yeah, and you did twenty. I did twenty four. So uh, wow, that flew. Yeah, you I did twenty four minutes. Well, those first three were just. Stories that I came up with the like the week. Uh, I love when you tell stories. Thank you. That is so your like. <clears throat> that's what I um afterwards I called Alice at twelve thirty. Yeah. Because I thought I was gonna cry and vomit, and he was asking me how did everybody else do mm -hmm. it. I was like Christian was so in his element because you are you're always funny, but you're the funniest when you're telling stories. Thank you. And that like longer mm -hmm. chunk of yeah, time I, is really good for you. So my really, and that but yeah. that's death for things like you know last comic standing right. auditions and things like right. that. You know, like you, well, because you, you have to, because you got to be. You got like two minutes to get out as much as I, possible. But I, think that's I just love storytelling comedy. Me though. too. I think that's what's beneficial to me, though, is because I've had to put those little pieces together for so long. Is now that I'm running my own shows and everything too, that I can do. Like, so one of my really close friends, one of my favorite comedians, is is Steve Simone, and Steve Simone's entire thing is telling stories. Mm -hmm. He's a great storyteller and he's super likable and he's just one of the best people like just leads with kindness and he's just such a good good dude um and he does that stuff and he's in longer form like where does he do it on stages all over clubs yeah, and yeah, colleges all, all over yeah all over yeah for real he does uh he's just been around he's forever i don't know him no he's really he's great so uh he came up with him at the comedy store but um but anyway, so that was the thing is that I was like, I had all these stories that I wanted to tell. And I was like, well, I'll just tell. I mean, because the thing with the supermarket thing, the salami thing mm -hmm. that I opened with, that happened to me that the, the morning of. No way. That happened to me on Saturday. Really? It yeah. did happen to you that yeah, day? I never was, know when people say that. No, the, that happened to me. Mm -hmm. That happened to me in the morning that day. And I told my wife, I was like, I, I got to I gotta bring this up tonight. And I was like, can I open with it? And I was like, I'll try to open with it. And then I was like, I can transition into the dog thing that happened last week. Yeah. yeah. And then the school thing happened two weeks ago. And I've also talked about it on the show. I've like I do that sometimes now as I use this show and I'll throw some stuff in there and I'll like if the audience responds to it. Like when I did the thing about the dog yeah. on Archie, I brought and that up on a live stream. The potty training one always slaps. Yeah, the too. potty yeah. training <laughs> one. And then which is also also a true story. So I like telling these long I mean, I could ease I mean, I was telling Brett on the ride home, I have easily over an hour and a half, two hours of material now that I could That's do. Cool. And like I told that story, I told the story about the tree in um in New York. Oh yeah. And um, that is like a, that was like a, and I was hosting the show that night, and I that was that was like a ten minute bit, and I could have done that, but I was like, ah, I want to tell new stories. I do. I think I I get more, and it's kind of Rick Ingram. You know Rick? Mm -hmm. God, I love Rick Ingram, and Rick Ingram's my, probably probably my favorite comic working today. Really? Still. Well. Yeah. Uh, um, and again, Rick, very close friend of mine. But like Rick, the reason why Rick's so good, he works the crowd. That's what he does. And so one of the things that I always used to do was I rely on my set that I had for a long time. And sometimes I would do the same thing for the same 10 or 15 minutes. And and now as I'm just getting older, you know, I like like I like telling new stories and seeing if they were like the stuff, <clears throat> the three new stories. I had way more fun than telling the two jokes that I had done before. I still had fun telling them like the one that I closed with was that joke I've been doing for 15 years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but and it just it's a high energy joke so i was like i'll just end with it but i yeah. could have done i could have done 30 40 minutes that night easily wow damn that's but cool it was i could have done like 700 minutes you could have you were great though too. i actually i looked that at your favorite my set that night that was fun because i think it was the best combination of 
just kind of improvising and throwing bits in. Yeah. My favorite points were never anything that I had had planned or anything like that. And yeah. that, that was what I'm becoming more comfortable with is going, okay, I'm going to plan out. I, I know 15 jokes. Yeah. And if they come up, they come right, up. If right. they don't, if they don't. It's a scary place to put myself in, but I like it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if I looked at all my jokes and I actually did them in order, I probably had an hour if you, yeah. if I go back to the And you can, still, you can always <clears throat> tighten them up. Right? Yeah. You can always add new things to them. That's what we, He and I went to Wood Ranch right beforehand, and we were just kind of running. Thanks for the invite. Well, you wouldn't have been. You, in the state you were in? Hmm. Um, oh, yeah. There's, there's, there's just no laughing way. Yeah. So we were. We, I just like to be invited. Yeah. We were throwing bits at each other. And just the jokes that we had, and we were like, and there was something that he at the end. What was it, the end of? Uh, it was the end of the salami bit. Brett gave me Brett gave me the tag at the end of it because I was like, I had something that I that I said that I really said to the guy, and then Brett's like, you know, you should add, you should add this because, and then it just closed up the whole bit. So it was it was great. It was it was it was, it, it, it was a really good. Night. I thought Winston Winston's a very good storyteller too. Mm-hmm. He is it, Winston. I think he was funny last time, but this time I was like, he's so much more comfortable and he's just super funny. He's got the fire. Yeah. He's got the fire. And then, so what I, and what, yeah, he's good. He's got the fire. And what Koi, Koi for me, and I've told this to Koi too, Koi has a very good presence about himself too when it comes to the hosting side and everything too. And he's got a good energy. And the thing about Koi that a lot of comedians, a lot of people in general don't have that he's got confident. He's, he's fearless. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. He's fearless. I've never seen anything like it. He's fearless. And that is a very good thing to have. My only um, thing, I told this to Coy in person and I tell him on the air and I'll tell him if he's sitting in front of me, I don't understand why he doesn't dive more into the comic book stuff and mm-hmm. other stuff that like, you know, cause he goes very blue. He goes very like kind of dirty. And I don't think he needs to do that. I don't think he needs to do it. He I think li- that's what he likes. He to likes do. to do it. Yeah. I don't think he needs to do it because, like, he's got so much knowledge in these other things, though, too. That I think that he would, with that confidence. I mean, his his confidence is is unbelievable. Is it, what I had, I think that Koi. One of the coolest things about him, and maybe this is the Boston in him, is that no matter how the audience is reacting, and because I've seen him a few times now, he is the biggest, most confident yes. person mm-hmm. on stage. And it's like, you can't kind of take your eyes off of him because he does this thing where he, and for a few times now I've seen him do it, he pulls the audience a lot. Yeah. And sometimes they give him nothing and sometimes they give him <laughs> something, but it doesn't really matter to him. No. He's ready to like leap on into whatever he's receiving. And that is, I I feel like sometimes like if somebody gave me nothing, I would crumble. I well, would crumble. I was going to say, he let's look, when I first started years and years ago, and I had something in my head that I thought was going to work, and it didn't. I did the cardinal mistake that a lot of comedians make. Is like, and I did this one for my first six months, and I even cringe to <laughs> hear myself say it because when comedians do it now, I go, what that didn't work or whatever, or go like, this supposed to be funny, guys. Oh. Yeah, I was like, I, I did, these oh, are jokes. I hate people even saying it. It's like when I was in college, it's the first time I ever did stand up, and I did something, and I remember thinking it was going to be so funny, and it bombed, and I went, that's funny, remember? And I was like, oh my god, I watched, I have that set on tape, and I've watched it before, and I'm like, you. Fucking idiot, and but Koi doesn't Koi more so like just like he'll if something doesn't he just he's talking yeah and if he it's tightens wild. up his stuff if he tightens up his stuff he could I I'm I had a person there who I, I've worked with on and I've been working with on certain like uh, this advertisement deals and things too and he came to watch the show and he was really he said that he brought some friends with him too that had no clue who we were and just wanted to come see a comedy show cool. and, and non biased they had a really good time they had a lot nice. of fun thought it was just like a very solid. Show in general had very complimentary things to say about you that you ran the show really well. That's People awesome. loved what what we all did. But um, so anyway, I like having conversations like this on Thursdays because when we we do, you know, I think that more and more with Thursday shows are becoming a more casual conversation where we do talk about news and we talk about other things too. But we can talk about things like this, and I know people are curious. So if you want to see what the hell we're talking about, join Patreon, patreon.com slash the big thing show. As soon as I get the show. From the club, I'm gonna put it up, um, and then yeah, I did see somebody who wrote said, "Oh, I signed up for Patreon because you said uh, every live stream we were gonna get." I was like, "Yeah, but this isn't a live stream. No. It wasn't a live stream." <laughs> it's like when we do live streams, and if we do live streams, and I definitely will. But like the club didn't have the capacity to do it that night. Plus the fact that I didn't have a team to do it because I'm not working with that website team. So what you will get is you'll absolutely get the show when I post it, but the club also has to send it to me. Do they film everybody's shows or yeah. you? Uh, oh. Yeah, wow. they're nice. Well, flappers, too. flappers always because they sell. They're smart. They sell yeah. them. They 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 tape every comedian set. If you want to buy, like if you if so if for some reason 
they were like, um, we're not sending you the whole show. I could, you could you could buy your set if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Like still, like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nobody anyway. else can. No one else can. No. No. Oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you oh, can. Oh, you can. Oh, for yeah. Yeah. I think that that might be what I'm going to find out from Flappers. I think they're going to need you guys to, to sign, sign off, off because they're not going to just give it to me. Fuck even that. Though it's not my signing show. off. You're not yeah. off. Um, anyway. Let it die that night. It, you know. no, well, I will. For me, it never looks as good as it feels. You know, what, that's what she said. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the, when you watch your set, it's. Can I tell you the opposite? What's that? So Mark Ellis had recorded that one part of me where I'm just opening saying mm-hmm. on Tuesday I started a movie and on Saturday I'm here hosting this. It's like the first thing that mm-hmm. I first thing I ever tried to do on stage. And I I don't remember saying those words. <laughs> and then he sent it to me and I was like, that sounds like somebody who told a joke. You, you I, your I, was, whole I was like, oh, that was cool. So it, to me, it felt like fuck, 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 fuck. Mm-hmm. But when I watched it, I was like, I didn't look like I was shaking inside, mm. even though I was shaking inside. No, and so you I also didn't do that. Open. Well, I meant in terms of like the the laughter. Like for some reason, when you mm. hear you the f- tape, it doesn't feel like the same you, way energy. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can't read the <clears throat> energy in the same <clears throat> in the same way sometimes. But some like, yeah, I mean, it's I watched back because I I'd gotten my setback and I wanted to see, and it actually did play the one the for me the the I liked this the cutoff line for the school mm-hmm. thing. That was the one I was most that I felt the most confident with. Cool. And it played pretty well. In yeah, the I like that one. Yeah. So anyway, uh, like I said, if you want to join patreon.com slash the big thing show, and we should get that up there soon. Um, before we move on to some topics, even though it's about half an hour in, who cares? Uh, let's get into both Manscaped mm. and DraftKings Casino. I'll tell you about both of them right now. Santa baby. Santa baby. Season for a fresh cut. It's finally here, guys. And it's the sponsor of today's show. It's Manscaped. You guys know I love Manscaped. You guys know I love Manscaped. And you should love Manscaped because I've been talking about them forever. They are the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. And they have just launched their fifth-generation performance package to help you avoid another silent night in the bedroom this year. Take care of your special snowflake with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. And watch your South Pole shine like never before. That's right, baby. Let's get into it. Get the best stocking stuffer of all by going to manscaped.com. But you got to use that code big thing for 20% off free shipping and your Mrs. Claus will thank you. Manscaped, it's a one-stop shop for all your holiday needs. They have the perfect gift in the Performance Package 5.0 and it includes a lot of perfect stocking stuffers. Get this for someone that you love. They have so many great, great things. I use the Weed Whacker. I love the Weed Whacker. It's a great gift for your pops. Nose, ear, hair, it's amazing. And how about boxers? Yeah, they got boxers. Take care of your chestnuts with Manscaped Boxers 2.0, featuring their signature jewel pouch to keep you calm, cool, and collected. Get 20% off free shipping. Use that code big thing, manscaped.com. 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use that code big thing. Say ho, ho, ho to a well groomed mistletoe with Manscaped. Unwrap the first of many presents this season with Holidays on the House from DraftKings Casino. With hundreds of games, prizes, promos, DraftKings Casino has everything on your list. Right now, new players who play $5 get $100 instantly in casino credits. What are you waiting for? Cozy up with all the classics like slots, blackjacks, roulette, or play exclusive games that you're only going to find at DraftKings Casino to feel the holiday cheer all along. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up with the promo Big Thing. Use that code. Big thing and play five dollars to get one hundred dollars in casino credits. That is promo code big thing only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. If you have a gambling problem, please call one eight hundred gambler or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 and up. Physically percent in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opt in new customer. Minimum $5 deposit. Max match 500 in casino credits, which require one time playthrough within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. 
All right, thank you to our friends over at Manscaped and DraftKings Casino. Helps out the show tremendously, so please, if you can, support us today by our wonderful sponsors. Um, I'll tell you, before we move on to more stuff, stories. So what I did, for, did you see Godzilla Minus One yet? No. Come on, Roxy. It was great. Do, it's one of my favorite movies of the year. Really? Hands down. Well, I like it. it it's pretty fucking good. It's subtitles the whole time? Yeah. You can't do it? No, I, I'm I'm such a little bitch, man. I'm like the most uncultured swine. Yeah. I can do it, though, and I will do it. And I have done it. I just, I'm, it, it's in theaters, right? It's in IMAX. And you need I to see to it. I have to wait till it's home. So I, I'm slow. I have to pause for subtitles because I can't ever read them fast enough. If you, they do it really in a, a really good way. It's because there's more action. Yeah, no, too many. No. Oh, really? No. It's a you lot do, of dialogue. You, it's, Damn it. Dude, this is, that. that's the mindset. A I lot wanted Roxy to do the screener so I could yeah. go with their. Uh, well, yeah, there's no, you can go, go see it in IMAX, both you guys. It's like I will. I'm. I hate this about myself, but it genuinely. I. I can't keep up with movies. I'm too slow. You should try because <laughs> this movie. This movie. This is. I'm one agree. Of those movies, That's a reading is hard. I'm telling you, this movie is meant for the big screen. Okay. It is meant for IMAX. It is so good because it doesn't rely just on the monsters. Mm. It's a human. Like most of these human stories, as I talked about on Transformers and Godzilla versus, Con they, you don't give a shit about the humans. Okay. I care about the humans Which so much. Which means there's a lot of dialogue. That's why is, I sit where I sit. You see me sit further up because I can't see shit. I, I highly recommend oh, seeing yeah, this movie. Oh yeah, that's where we can't go to yeah. things because I have to sit far back because I can't see up close. <laughs> no, well, so let me, so let me tell you kind of what happened. So I don't tell me. No, not about the movie, oh. but Regal, um, who has great IMAX theaters, they had, you know, they knew that how much I love that and everything too. And they have a couple different theaters that they want people to kind of get the word on of what their IMAX experience is. Which one did you go to? So there were <laughs> options. So go to them. And I looked at a few of the ones that, um, and I said, well, how about that one? Like, well, that's not available. That's not available. And the option that was available was Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Tennessee. So this is why you went to Tennessee. That's why I went to Tennessee. So I go. And so the, the team that helped me kind of book it says, well, all right, well, you can go in this time, go see the movie, tell them, you know, your experience, and then stay in a hotel, come home. Yeah. I'll do all that except the stay in the whole thing, hotel. <laughs> wow. You, you flew in, flew out? I left on a red eye at 11.55 p.m., got in at 5.30 a.m., went and saw the movie, at you know, right in the morning, left at two forty five PM, came back, got back last night. Had an hour Is it yesterday? One point well, I had one point five hours of sleep on Monday. I caught up on sleep like last night. One point five. Thank God. I don't care if I get a sponsor for them or not. Thank God for the Delta Lounge. <laughs> that Delta Lounge is an oasis. It is so good. I went to that Delta Lounge on the night of before I left and I Pounded down a few uh, pieces of cheese and some other stuff. There's a little mm. sandwiches. The Delta Lounge in Tennessee, we're talking bagels with the with the, this. They make this. It's like this little egg thing. And I'm like, wait a minute, this can't be good. I'm like, it's been sitting. This has been sitting. Like you know, you get into those cafeteria. Holy shit! It was like gourmet stuff. It exploded on my bagel, <laughs> and the eggs just kind of spread out all naturally. I had two of them. Then I went to the movie. I come back to the Delta Lounge again. <laughs> barbecue chicken, macaroni and cheese. Oh. Barbecue chicken in Tennessee. You kidding me? But tell me you're in your 40s without telling me you're in your 40s when you said I pounded down some yeah. cheese. Mm. Yeah, I like, thought you were going to say some brewskis took advantage of the booze. I had a, I had a, I had a, I had a Bloody Mary. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. I had a Bloody Help Mary. Help you sleep on the plane. Yeah. Oh, dude. I'm telling <clears> you. But like it was like, but I went Road Warrior style of it and just kind of like again 1.5 hours of sleep and just like i'm just doing this but the imax experience at regal i mean this one in tennessee i don't know if they can i mean they have other ones that are really great but this is like i gotta show you the video super clean theater but like it's massive it's bigger than the one in universal mm. really yeah because oh, i love that one yeah and that's a, that's a different i'm that's a different theater but oh. like, but but it looks it, it looks it's just massive in the sound and the quality of it all. And Godzilla at that at that height. This is whew. so you're saying I should go to Tennessee to see it. No, but you should see it in IMAX. Nah, let's go to Tennessee, Rox. Can you line up that same thing? Go to the Delta Lounge. Um, but yeah, I would. Did you're they gonna... put you in the Delta Lounge, or do you have? Delta? I have. I have Delta. <laughs> I don't have that. Yeah, I have Delta. I've got one with my credit card, but 
like after the pandemic, the lounges went to shit. Like there's there's not any options. No, I mean I don't oh. get into the Delta. There's certain ones for it's it's the priority pass or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's cool. Sometimes it's like, oh, this is great, and you can hang out. And- I, how did you guys <coughs> grow up? Like I grew up with a dad who. Sad. who oh. <laughs> I was so sad. I grew up with a dad who paid for everything in cash. Oh, okay. I never knew anything about <laughs> credit. I have net kind of. Yeah, I didn't know anything about credit at all. Like okay. I. I had a debit card until I was in college. Yeah, I, just good. I never. I didn't knew. have a credit card until I was probably about that age. Too. I knew nothing, and still to this day, I still have like my rinky dink credit card. I've mm. never had like a big, a big grown up girl yeah. credit card. I don't know anything. Did you? Are you? Have you guys always been good with money stuff like that? No, I, no, <laughs> not, not, not really. But like, but I've especially when I was what I I've actually m- mad at myself that I didn't do it earlier especially during like the Schmodown days and all that stuff that I should have gotten that card and should have had that stuff to, for the miles and all those Is things. it it's a Delta specific card? Yeah, it's a it's a, you yeah, have a Delta for it's and you know, you build up the points, you do all that stuff too and it's it's been great. Yeah, I've been wanting to do that for JetBlue but cuz I that's where I've flown to mm-hmm. Boston a lot, but I hear that the Delta now Delta is supposed to be like the number one. It's and it, and it's changed because I remember years and years ago I wasn't a Delta fan, and then I started flying with them. Yeah, American back in the day was like yeah. the dopest, and now it's Delta. I'm, t- oh, I'm on board Airlines now. Sucks. I'm on board now, man. I'm telling you, like, because I I didn't know if the 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 food there would be. It was fantastic, and the Tennessee food, holy shit! Like, you got to get barbecue chicken in general when you go to yeah. Tennessee if you can. And I did, and it was just like you should see my face, and it's, this is exhausted ape. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! This is amazing. But you didn't get to do anything in Tennessee other than that. No, what's hilarious is that the the cab driver on the way to the movie theater was like, first time in Tennessee." I'm like, "Yep." He goes, "He goes, where are you going?" I go, "Home." I go, "What?" I go, "Yeah, I'm going right back on the plane." He's like, "You're only here for a few hours." I'm like, "He's from L.A." I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Where's your bag?" I go, "I don't need one. Just need wow. I just had my backpack." And he goes, "That's crazy." He's like, "I've never heard anybody do that." I go, "That's me." And do I'm you like, not smell? I've never smelled you, but I would I, smell. At 12, remember, this is what I did. I got on. I got in the shower right before I left to go to the airport. Mm-hmm. And then I essentially, again, didn't fall asleep. Took a toothbrush with me, took mouthwash with me, did that in the Delta yeah. Lounge. Right? And I was, that was basically it's like essentially showering in the morning, going through. And then I got back, jumped back in the shower as soon as I got home. Some of them have showers, some of the lounges. The, they might have, but I didn't see After it. After the plane, I to. smell. I just oh. I can't. I smell. Well, on the way there, on the way there, I had the whole row to myself. Okay. On the way back, not as lucky, but it's still, the woman was very nice. Was you nice. don't care if you smell coming back. No, but there's someone ripping farts on the first flight, I'll tell you that. What mm. is up with that? Someone ripping farts, and you know it. They're not even trying They're to hold it. They're just nervous. No, nervous no, that it nervous is, is going to so, catch them. Sometimes I have to put my nose in my shirt. Yeah, because people don't care. On the plane. He's going to let it go. Uh, it's just so unfortunate. My eyebrows were going to melt off my face at one point. <laughs> yeah. it, was re- it was really bad. It's so unfortunate. It was really bad. Um, what's unfortunate is that we have to move on to the next topic, um, and which we don't have. It's the first topic, I guess, of the show. Yeah. Um, I wh- can't believe they got represented. Yeah, that's what today's show is. You can either you take it or you leave it. I really don't care. Um, it's, it's I had I am having fun talking to you guys. And I, think I a, hope a lot, you take it. Yeah. No, but I think I think that a lot of the times the audience really likes that's us to what talk about said. this stuff too. What? Yeah, for, especially for you guys. I hope you take it. I'm sorry. Don't ask him the too dirty joke. Don't ask. I'm so surprised you didn't bring that up. The dirty joke. It was funny. It was really good. You I know what's so funny about that joke, by the way, too? What, but not, after he said, I don't know if you've watched the clip back. Your reaction is awesome. And by oh, that's what I have beef with. That's what I oh, have beef with. Oh boy, beef when, city. When you said on stage, you said, "Well, when when I said to Christian." Um, he's like, I really like what you're doing, but he looks at, but you're not funny. Oh. I never said those words Christian? ever. I never I said. I didn't even tell the full story. I, what I said was this. What I said was a lot of, I said sometimes. <laughs> I don't have a back, sense of humor. <laughs> no, I didn't say you didn't have a sense of humor. Back in the Collider Live days, you're much better about it now. And that's what I was about to compliment you with, with that joke. <laughs> we would throw a bit. Instead and of you, complimenting you. Know, you, would, you would kill the bit because you didn't get the bit. And you would just stonewall it with your face, and we'd be in the middle of telling the joke, and you killed it because you didn't get it. I don't feel that way, but you have said that many times to the point where the audience says it because you've said it. Well, I don't think I've ever said that. No, you've said definitely but, said it. But either way, but it's not the case now <laughs> because when when Brett said the thing about the wood thing, you're because you set him up for that joke, and he delivered your face, your face when he does it. 
is like you look at the camera and you do this smile and then you go my slit my slit <laughs> you this, and you played with it Good. and I it played was with my slit you played with your slit mm -hmm. and when that happened i was like yeah so you definitely do get it but i never said to you you're not funny i've never said those words to you Yes, you have. No, I did not. Mm. I never Christian. said that. I never said you're not funny. You, do you know the day that I'm talking about? When I was leaving for a collider. <laughs> so I didn't say that part, but. Well, yeah, I thought you were. So basically, I'll tell it too. When when we were, and, and I told, I've also told you that I've regretted that decision. Yeah, yeah. So when I left Collider. No, that, I, that's why it's a joke. I know, it's not, I know. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I didn't take it seriously, but I'm just saying, but, but but I thought that's where you were going with it. And I wouldn't have minded it if you did. When, because I've told you that I've regretted it. When I left Collider, I said to, and I and I won't say who, but I actually, I, I went to somebody that I wanted to come with me and they were like, no, I'm going to stay here. And I was like, are you, because we've been together for a bit. Like, no, I'm choosing to stay here. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And I'm not that somebody. You are not that <laughs> someone. And then when I was leaving, you, we, we had a conversation about it. I said, I'm starting my own thing. And I said, what I said was, I, I'm going to focus heavier in on the comedy and I need people who are funny. Something mm. along those lines. What was the implication of that? Thing? Yikes. So I don't know if I said it just like that. But no, you I, did. Even if I hear you myself did. say it like that, I'm definitely saying you're not funny. But yeah, you not did what say I, it like that. But I was saying I was, it, but my, my intention was. I'm not a comedian. Was, no, that, that was my intention. My intention that I was going to level, I was going to lean heavy on the comedy. And then as I was doing it more, I realized that because, because you for a bit, even when, when big things started, it was, I'm still leaning into the comedy side of it. And then I even told myself, I said, you're stupid. You need Roxy. And then when I called you and we and we had because I when we figured out the chemistry because I think it was just you and I doing it alone before he was coming on right? yeah and then we started doing it so yeah and I told you I was like, it was a dumb decision I should have taken you with me to SCN Live it's so crazy how time can just warp your view on something because I remember before the show somebody had asked me who is Chris Carr and I I, I don't know if this is true or not because I don't really usually watch a show but I was like oh. Chris is to Campia as I am to Christian, like the right hand woman or whatever. And I, and I don't ever think about me and you not hosting together. Right. But that was like a good chunk of time. Yeah, so at least six. Well, because you were hosting Collider Live though for a good. I mean, that's in. But I do think that was good. Yes, it though. did very well. No, we but that's a, the, we had amazing um, viewership and it it slayed. <laughs> it's but it doesn't matter though. You still got a chance to do. No, it was it. awesome. It connected me with Darina too, yeah. and then obviously that's how oh. we started a company together. And I really liked that time period, um, but yeah, for obvious reasons, it didn't work out. But either way, so um, I don't think of it in my head that there was a six month time period. I think of hosting with you for a decade. We've been doing it for a while, yeah. And it was a little bit of a break. And like I said, I think that is, that's where you can you come into that spot where you go, oh. Yeah, because like you said too, there's time you, you grow. Everybody grows as a host, and like I don't have that complaint about you at all anymore. Like when we throw jokes at you, we've done it a couple different times. When it was the the, the peg boys and all that stuff too. Like you go, you go, you you it's go with the joke now. The peg boys was the best. <laughs> What? Brett, Brett the just best. actually choked on his own saliva. He Dude, loves you got to talk boys. about the peg boys on stage. You got to talk about the peg boys on stage. Why haven't you been talking about the peg boys like more it, often? Yeah, how things was, how, we think things are so dirty now, and then yeah, dealing with the yeah, yeah. I mean that like, <laughs> these things called the peg boys. They put their legs up and they're open for business. <laughs> when you said the open for business, that killed me. <laughs> open for business. <laughs> and then what did we put the the, the you and you and um. Uh, what's his face? I just yeah. real quick. I just realized this is what happens when you open up the gate by yourself. <laughs> oh, know. you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Um, all right, look. All right, I'll tell you about a topic in just a second. I'll figure out what that topic is going to be. But before I do that, I want to tell you both about Kajabi and AG One. Here you go. All right, guys. Let's talk about AG One. You guys know I love AG One. If you've been listening to my show, you've heard me talk about them, and I've been drinking them for about two years now, and I love it. Never been a vitamins guy. I've told you that. I take it all one shot, AG1. I put it in a water bottle. I shake it up. I'm good to go. I recommend AG1 to my friends. I recommend AG1 to my family, everybody. AG1 is a team of doctors and scientists. It is tested for 950 contaminants and NSF certified for sport. It is formulated based on the latest science and maintains high quality standards. You guys know They've been with us for a while because you guys know, too. You've all been checking them out, and everybody who's been signing up to AG1 says the same thing. It's changed your energy. It's changed how you approach things in a day. You're smiling more. You're running around the place, and you're sleeping better. I know. 
AG1 is the supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why they've been a partner for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and you get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash big thing. Drinkag1.com slash big thing. Check it out. For creators out there, a lot of different creators out there, and I want to tell you guys about Kajabi. I want to tell you about them right now. I'm excited to tell you about them because if you didn't know, uh, I think, look, I've been doing this creator thing for a long time. And what everybody strives to do is you want to be able to make enough to earn a living doing what you love. So Kajabi makes it easy, actually, to diversify your revenue. You can build your own brand. You can turn your audience into customers. Now, with the disruption of revenue streams from algorithm updates and product changes, if you're a creator and you don't use Kajabi to diversify your income beyond ad revenue and brand deals, you're leaving money on the table. And this is very true. Look, I told you, I'm planning on making a move. This is like what I, this is my, my, my family, man. I'm, I'm everything. So this is something great. Earning a living directly from your uh, from your audience is one of the most sustainable ways for creators to build a business. And you don't need a huge following to do it on Kajabi. You just don't. Creators and entrepreneurs value full ownership and control over their brand. With Kajabi, you have 100% autonomy with free customizable templates that you can make on your own even if you're not a tech if you're not tech savvy and you keep what you earn. You don't have a huge audience, doesn't matter. You don't need it to make a sustainable income. There are thousands of creators on Kajabi making six and seven figures with less than 50,000 followers. Try Kajabi and join the creators and entrepreneurs who have earned over $6 billion. Right now, Kajabi is offering a 30-day free trial to start your own business if you go to kajabi.com slash big thing. K-A-J-A-B-I dot com slash big thing. Go to kajabi.com slash big thing and earn more doing what you love. All right, thank you to our friends over at Kajabi and AG1, any one of our wonderful sponsors today. If you can, sign on up. Let's do it. All right, I guess we'll go main topic here for the day, and the main topic is going to be all right, 824 films. They're all coming to max. That's right. Warner Brothers Discovery has closed a multi-year deal with A24 that will see the famed indie distributor bringing the slate of films exclusively to HBO. This is big. Uh, it'll go to HBO Max and Cinemax following their theatrical runs. The recently released Nick Cage film, Dream Scenario, Sof Sophia Coppola's Priscilla, Larry Charles Dick's The Musical, Jonathan Glazer's The Zone of Interest, and the release of Jonathan Demi's Stop Making Sense all fall under the deal. Sean Duncan's, Duncan's? Durkin's. Sean Durkin's upcoming The Iron Claw and Alex Garland's Civil War will also be a part of it. The output agreement follows after the expiration of A24's deal earlier this year with Showtime that a deal was struck back in 2019. It's not all, though, as the two companies have extended their licensing deal for A24's library of movies on HBO and Max, expanding to encompass more than 100 titles over the terms of the agreement. That will bring celebrated titles like Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, Uncut Gems, Past Lives to the Service, Join the likes of Hereditary and Moonlight, which were already there under their prior agreement. Royce Battleman, great name, EVP of content acquisitions for Warner Brothers, says in a statement, continuing our relationship with A24 to bring award-winning award movies alongside recent fan favorites to subscribers adds incredible value to HBO and Max Value Proposition. The diverse range of stories that come from the A24 pipeline make this partnership so impactful for our audience. This is a big deal. This is a big deal because A24 is, especially from film fans, like beloved. Yeah. Beloved because they've just put out quality stuff, like really good stuff. I, I, I don't know how much I can talk about um, Iron Claw yet. I don't know as far as the embargo for review goes, but I could just say that it was it was a pretty powerful movie, right? And I just watched Past Lives on the plane. Did you see Past Lives? No, I almost watched it on the plane too. It's really good. That's it's what really, I hear. It's a really good movie, and it's, and it's, it's different, and it's, that's what I like about it is the way that they – it's not just conventional storytelling, and A24 does that very well. And this is a big deal for HBO and, and Warner Brothers because they don't they need stuff too, and they're in the midst of like trying to license their stuff out, other things to make more money. But to bring in something like A A24 and their entire library, 
Very smart move, and I think it'll benefit them. I think this is massive yeah. because A24 is the bee's knees. It is the number one. It is the best. And when we think of HBO, we think of prestige, yes. right? That's what you think of. You think of either Sopranos or uh, Sex and the City or any yeah. of the shows that we grew up like just living for that were the best of the best. And uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, just whatever genre, they had it. But it was always aces. And... A24 makes the best movies that are out of the last 10 years. And some movies that you haven't even seen, like things like Mid-90s, which is a movie that I loved mm. that was produced oh, by, yeah. I believe, Jonah Hill back in the yeah, day. Yeah, it was uh, maybe five, six years ago. Yeah. But they do excellent work. And for Warner Brothers to secure this, it just shows that they are paying attention to what people miss about Warner Brothers and HBO. It is a little confusing, though, that because people think of A24 as the little guy kind of, right? right? And mm -hmm. now them going to Warner Brothers, I think this is only positive for Max, but how are people going to feel about this for A24? I am curious. I don't think it's going to change much because I think that it's, it's there's, they're not getting involved in the creativity and of their actual storytelling. It's just it's a distributor. Yeah. It's just a place for them to air their stuff. So it's like, I think most people are going to be like, that's great because you get more eyes on it and you can watch the whole entire library. And what but it they does. But they are the man. They're, it is it, the man. And sure. a lot of people who love A24 stuff don't. Don't like the man. Don't like the man. Now that's the casual viewer also, but a lot of the, but a lot of those people too, even the big film fans, as you said before, do like the stuff that HBO Max puts on. Max is one of the more revered streaming services because of the quality and because of the stuff they have on and what this will also do. Did you watch the Gossip Girl reboot? No, it was a bad. I didn't see it. But but it canceled. Okay. <laughs> but they, I mean look, you can't you can't have you, you can't win all the time. But HBO did, Christian. That's the thing. Uh, HBO won all yeah, of the time. I, right, but they still and Max have... does not. Oh. And, well, I don't know. HBO's had had a couple things. I'm sure if you go back in the time that that didn't work. What was that one? Oh man, I remember there was one, uh, John of Cincinnati. That didn't do very well. I didn't see it. Yeah, and they, they have shows that don't do very well. But, but shows it, that you watch but, and you're like, this is trash? Mm, I don't know. But it, it, either way, it still has a pretty... It's, it's, Coco and the Breeze. Yeah, that one didn't do one. too well. <laughs> it's got a good... Cut. What was Coco and the Breeze about? Coco and the Breeze was about um, it, the, uh, one of those monkeys that knows sign language or right. whatever, Coco. And oh. the Breeze was uh, a race car driver, and right. they were kind of an unlikely pair um, what of, did they do of with, detectives. But what did they do with what did they do with Breeze when he he was coming out of the doctor's? He had like a hearing loss for like six minutes or something. Six minute hearing yeah. loss, yeah. and it was just as I mean, he's like what 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 for six minutes right. long? He just says what what what, and then he suddenly gets his hearing back. Right. Um, but Coco helps him. Teaches him sign language and, and baseball uh, and baseball and, yeah. and and it's you know it's like a coming of age, uh, buddy cop, uh, you know uh, rom com. It's a, sl it's a it's a joke fest. Oh no no no, no. Oh, rom com so. together. Yeah yeah every it's it's it, it it's one of the these films that hits every genre. Oh, so um, it was a show. Th that's what I meant. Oh, show. it was a yeah. film that turned into a show. Yeah, it was a first. It was a film. It was the it was film so was popular. made? Yeah. The film was made in 1930s. This is a oh, okay. remake. It was a show they right. made about the. I was thinking of the original oh, black it. and I'm white sorry, film. I'm sorry. In the 1930s. Okay. <clears throat> and it's called what again? Coco and the Breeze. Okay, Coco and the Breeze. But that wasn't a success for HBO, you're saying? In, no. In the 1930s, no. HBO didn't do well with Coco and the Breeze. No, no. No, the show was not in the 30s. The movie oh, right, that right, they right. made the oh. show about. Okay. So. It can get a little confusing. Right. Um, for us peasants. And yeah. who plays the who plays uh, the Breeze? The Breeze? Yeah, is that Nick Nolte? Nick Nolte, yeah, right, definitely. Right. Back. He's back. Baby, right, 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 and, big time. And who plays? Who plays Coco? Coco is CGI. Um, CGI'd. Oh, okay. um, it is uh, not Doug. Um, D. D. Uh, D. Wallace. Who's the other one? Who's the one? Schmeagel. Who's Schmeagel? Oh, Andy Circus is back. Yeah, Circus is oh, back. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah he's. Oh, like, wow, it's typecast. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God! Interesting. Okay. All right. All right. Well, there you go. You should be doing the TV time segment. I should. I should. Yeah. I've been checking out a lot of a lot of TV lately. Fair enough. Well, we'll get into all that video games. We we'll get into TV in just a second. So. Anyway, I think this is the other reason why I was going to say this is a good move for A24 is because when you get onto a platform like HBO and your library is on, especially movies like Past Lives and um, uh, The Iron Claw. Everyone can see them. And now there's a reason for people to watch the Oscars and mm -hmm. to hope that you, because what I was saying about the Oscars, the Oscars is such a, the Oscars to me, every, I know you love the Oscars. We have this conversation every year. The Oscars to me is <laughs> you're the like, return don't to glamour. Me. I already know. No, but I know. But don't I know get what you're started gonna, on how much we you say love. It all the time. I say like every time I don't even watch the Oscars anymore. Like oh, I don't. I, I mean, I, because for me, I just I'll tune in who won and mm -hmm. I want to see what because 
the Oscars is not for. I mean, the Oscars are for film lovers, like film, who are in the know, actors, actresses, people who are in the know, who are big film buffs and paying attention to this news. They are not for the casual fan anymore. The Oscars, they are not, and they wonder. Why does it keep going down catastrophically yeah. every year? Because no one knows these movies from a casual viewer that you're putting out there. And an opportunity like this to get your movies out there where you're like, oh, let's say Iron Claw and Past Lives are nominated. And then somebody who's like, oh, you know what? I, I, I didn't know about that Past Lives movie, but I just saw it on HBO or just saw it on Max. I'll tune in. It's getting a lot of uh, nominations. It is the difference every single season between the movies people watch and the movies people don't. If it is available on streaming, yeah. people watch it. But a lot of these movies, even if they're available, they're twenty five dollars to buy, and right. you can't rent them. And, right. and that's all in VOD, and it's crazy. Which is so stupid, and considering you want to try to get more casuals, and it's look, you are right. You're definitely right, and this is a good move for them. It's I, a good move. I, and the the truth is, if it's not Warner Brothers. Then it's Disney, and if it's not Disney, then it's Paramount, right. and if it's not like there's no distributor that somebody's can go to, get that's them. the little guy. Yeah. You know? Somebody's gonna get them, and they're gonna get enough. Like net, but Netflix it gets buried. They're gonna put like a whole section of like a twenty four stuff. It's a good move for them. It's a really good move, and it really puts them in the forefront of like saying more people know about our movies, because I think the Oscar the Oscars do have a problem of like there's some of these movies like one of my favorite movies this year was American Fiction. Have you guys heard of it? No. <laughs> right. And Jeffrey Wright is incredible in it. And he, it's so – he'll be nominated. He'll be nominated. Now, will they win? I don't know. But American Fiction is such a good movie. I would have never – if I wasn't in this business and if I wasn't like, – I get the screeners and stuff too. I wouldn't know about this movie because it's barely even promoted. I think it's Amazon. But it's so good. What it, is your number one of the year? Um, I'm about – I'm mixing. I'm not going to give my number one, but I'll tell you who's in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Oppenheimer's in the conversation. Yeah. Uh, Godzilla minus one is in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Are they on opposite yeah, ends? Yeah, they're on. Uh, Air is in the conversation. Love that movie. Um, so those are those are like three. Of, I mean, are, I'm trying to think of the other ones that are trying to pop it. Wish there. is one of his nah, favorites. It's not it. no, I, no. I actually put you know it's fun, I put like a whole bunch of <clears throat> uh, ones in there that I I've enjoyed. I made a list last night on the plane actually. Um, let me see where it is. I'm actually excited about A24 being on there because I I have that same thing where I go, oh, that looks really cool, and then it just goes away and I never get to see it. I I, I think I've seen more A24 than you know uh, uh, mainstream, if you will. Yeah, yeah films. they're the best. Yeah. And I still haven't seen Marcel, so now I can see that. Right, it's the best movie is that a, ever. Yeah, it is A24, yeah, yeah, of right? course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so good, Christian. Did you watch? Uh, did you watch? Are you there, Goddess Me, Margaret, with your? Girls, I so my wife and my oldest watched it together. That makes I have sense. not seen it, but I heard, but they both really liked it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Did she read it? She did. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what's she's funny? a big reader, right? Yeah, so what's funny is that I have what does God say? It's your period, deal with it, more or less. That's yeah. what he says. But I, I deal went, with it, honey. <laughs> I was going through God the, calling we you gave honey. you the rib. I gave you his rib. What more do you need? You got a period now, <laughs> deal with it. It's become. It was. It was in the fine print. Sign the contract. Come on. You signed the contract. You ate the apple. I said, "Don't eat the apple." This is all in that book. Oh, now God sounding Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus was. Yeah. The King of the Jews. Yeah. There yeah. you go. See. He got you. Um. Anyway, what are they saying? I had some. Oh, the the list. Yeah, you told me it was yeah. on there. I'm not gonna. Say, no, I didn't. Here, let me put these things. These are the best. You didn't say Godzilla. Oh yeah, boy. So good. Um, Godzilla. Some of these. Oh, you know what else is in the conversation, Roxy? The other two. The other, uh, Blackberry's in the conversation. Oh, I did like it. Blackberry's in the conversation. I watched that on a plane. Really good. So there's a lot. I mean, there's other things that. Are, but I was looking at some of these movies that came out. There were so many movies that came out in the beginning of the year that I was like, that was this year. If Barbie wins Best of Movie of the Year. Will you be upset? No, I don't like that. I'm not necessarily a fan of the movie, but I understand it because look, that's the thing. I think that public per, uh, perception overall, because critically it was beloved, audiences really loved it because I didn't like it. I'm going to get upset about it. Yeah. No, because that's to me, that's like one of those things where I think because what I did acknowledge him when I told you on the phone, I was like, yeah, it didn't work for me. Very, very well made movie. Right, of course. Very well made movie. You, you Directed think, very well too. Do you think that it's more likely to get nominated than not? It could get nominated. Yeah. It could. Um, because there's not a lot of stuff that's coming out at the end of the year. I Dune. think Ryan Gosling will get nominated for best supporting. Oh no, Dune's next year. Yeah. Dune's next year. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So, I, that's just the one movie I said Dune, and that's Aquaman, not the series. Aquaman, Aquaman, Aquaman is the only one, the big one that's and coming Wonka. out. And Wonka, yeah, so I guess we, we'll, we can transition into that. Wonka, to me, um, Dune. you know, let me do this real quick because I can actually piece this out also, too. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. And then, Roxy, I'll get your thoughts after. But let me start with this. Quick non-spoiler review of Wonka. It's the new movie based off of, it is a prequel to the Gene Wilder movie from the 70s. And they very much make you aware of that. They put the music in there. It's the lead up to it. Uh, it's directed by Paul King, who directed the Paddington movies. And what I said in my out of the theater reaction that I will echo here is that this movie, if you go into it expecting a companion piece to the Gene Wilder movie and you're looking for that same kind of tone, you're going to be disappointed because it's not. That movie has an edge to it. This movie does not have an edge. It's way more of a family film. It's a full-on musical. Um, I think Timothy Chalamet is very charming in this version of who he is portraying Wonka to be. But Wonka is was very kind of aloof and strange, and he's definitely quirky, but he's – it's very it's a vanilla it's a vanilla version of of Wonka and they don't to me it was like in the original movie you're always kind of saying well is he magic he's kind of magic was in this they're doing magic in the street and mm. I think the stuff with with Timothy Chalamet what he does is great and then the girl what's the the character's name the the button no no Baruch Gasol no no um oh man S I can't remember no but I can't remember but. The the lead char character that he essentially meets when Olivia Coleman kind of um, uh, puts him in a situation where he's kind of kind of work for her, and he is he noodle. noodle. I didn't even I didn't even see it. I just noodle? thought of it. I just noodle. thought of it. I noodle. thought of noodle. Well, noodle noodle is because she was good too. Yeah. So there were things that sometimes <laughs> though the characters and the villains in this played like a Muppets movie without the Muppets, mm. and the villains were awful. The villains were awful. Um, I thought Keegan Michael Key. I don't know what movie he was in. He's doing a New York accent in London for some reason, and that bit that they played <clears throat> over the top. But when you look at it as an overall Paul King family film that you can take your family to, it works. So overall, I'd probably say like probably three point one out of five. Um, but it is enjoyable. I think you'll walk out. People are like, hey, if they wrote back, I saw it, and I walked out with a smile on my face, and I had a really good time with it, and it was something I wanted to see with my family, and I just was kind of singing and thought it was enjoyable, and I felt good watching it. I get it. So that's my overall review, non-spoiler, of Wonka. All right, Roxy, so that's my review of Wonka. What do you think? I think I, I liked it a bit more than you, okay. but not – of course, it doesn't touch. A lot of people were like, this isn't going to be as good as the Gene Wilder yeah. one. Yeah, no crap, my dog. Like, of mm -hmm. course, it's not even close. And it, it doesn't try to be. It's not even in the same genre. No cap. So yeah. this this felt like uh, like a Harry Potter Wonka movie. Or even like a or like Paddington style, right? Mm -hmm. like yeah. That kind of tone. No, but, but Paddington, to me, has so much soul. Yeah, that's and fair. And this, to me, was more like... Bippity boppity boop yeah, or something. Yeah. It, I, I did enjoy it though. I didn't have the same problem with the villains because I pictured myself as a little kid thinking that was funny. Right. And I think right. as a little kid, I would have thought that that was a very funny bit. For an adult, it's like, oh my God, and, I get it. And okay. That's that's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. where the, you're, you're coming you're, from being an adult. You're looking at this at two different things. I'm looking at this as my as a, as a dad with my kids. I feel the same way that you do. And I think that this is, it's just that the first one is held to high standards. Like, you can't compare it. You can't compare it if it's not supposed to be related. These are supposed but to be supposed related. To be, yeah. Of yeah. course. So I I actually like the story. I like the friendship messages. I think that that's really powerful. The music didn't land for mm. me as well. Uh, there's a lot of songs. There, there's this one one scrub scrub that gets oh, yeah, stuck yeah, yeah, in yeah, your yeah, head yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But for the most part, it's like when when we're comparing this to imagination right. which is just one of the most beautiful and songs and thrown in randomly in this movie yeah no i didn't mean beautiful in this movie no, i, know I what mean, you mean as a yeah. song yeah. it just did feel like we are comparing not apples and oranges apples and horses you know just yeah. completely different beasts yes and i i enjoyed it i did walk out with a smile i liked our leads i don't feel like timothy chalamet is at all doing a gene wilder no. thing he's, no, he's doing not. his own thing but for this movie, his thing was adorable. He was yeah. really, really cute. He was like this precious, this yeah. precious version of Willie. Very, very innocent and very naive. 
Yes, and yeah. v- just like somebody that you're like, oh, get him, Willie. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. And that was cool. So right now, I think it sits at a 79 on Rotten Tomatoes. I think that's a very fair score. I Ooh. do too, and I think that I mean, look, as I said, when and for the way that Rotten Tomatoes works, anything three and over is positive. So I would be in that positive mm-hmm. thing. But I think is it a, it's not. It just has. It's got no edge to it, right? And I do think that. The one thing, the difference between what... So they softened the Oompa Loompa slave labor. <laughs> they they do something with Hugh... Right? I mean, well, what's his name? Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Hugh Jackman. I was going to say Hugh Jackman. Hugh, very different Oompa Loompas. But Hugh, um, Hugh Grant is... Funny. He's funny. But it's like, that's that's what I'm saying, though. When it's hard not to relate it because they're trying to relate it. And like the thing is with Willy Wonka in the 70s version is that you always knew Gene Wilder knew better than everybody else Mm -hmm. like he had it over everybody else like he always outsmarted everybody and he always knew what was coming it was his grand plan that's not this version of Willy Wonka this Willy Wonka can get tricked he's a little he's naive he's kind of uh but you do get where then his edge comes from later where you're like oh I would be a little jaded too Mm -hmm. if this kind of stuff kept happening to me sure but okay so in the reason why people don't love Alden and Solo right is that he's clearly trying to do Harrison Mm -hmm. and the rest of the world looks like what is Harrison's world this the movie didn't look at all or feel at all like Gene Wilder's mm-hmm. world. So it didn't really matter to me that I Timothy agree. wasn't him because yeah. it, even though it was a prequel to that story, the, it, it wasn't really a prequel. Well, no, the bottom line is this is an, this is an enjoyable family film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I would so, definitely watch yeah. it again and it was cute. It was cute. All right. What about how he got his name when he's like, he didn't have a name and he goes up to the place and they're like, what's your name? And and he goes, he won't tell me his name, Willie. And he goes, oh, Willie. Yeah. And he goes, Willie. It's actually one of, I'm the only person I know who likes that moment in Solo. Oh, so. <laughs> oh it's so lame. Uh, and then, yeah, they were watching the Muppets in the background yeah. and he said, waka, waka, waka. waka. And, like, and he says, like, wonka, wonka, wonka. Wonka. Mm. Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka. Uh, so stupid. That's a little moment. Anyway, all right, we're going to close out a longer episode today, but we'll close out with this. Roxy, tell me what I should be watching on television. Yeah. Okay, a couple different things. Did you guys watch Squid Games? The, no. The game? No, I saw everybody loves it. Okay, I will say it is not a good look for our society oh. that everybody watched Squid Game. Yeah. And then thought that this is what we should do, make an mm-hmm. actual Squid Game. Right. But it is entertaining as hell. It's on Netflix. It, the premise is exactly what Squid Game is, but you're not dying, although they mm-hmm. fake it. They okay. shoot you with things and you have to pretend to die on the okay. ground, which is interesting. It's 456 players that are playing for $456 million. Whoa. No, $4,560,000. Oh, oh, so yeah. So $4.5 million. Oh, shit, so a, a ton of money. And they're competing. And some of them are backstabbing each other. Some of them are yeah. teaming up. It is, if, if you like competition shows, this is a very interesting okay. one. Uh, and I, I okay. definitely recommend Netflix? it for that. Yeah, that's on Netflix. Are you guys watching the Nathan Fielder show, The Curse? No. no. Okay, so this is new cringe television. You guys know he's the guy who brought us the rehearsal. Yes. And yes. he is Nathan for you. Mm-hmm. He is, a, this is a scripted show now. So it's with Emma Stone and him and um, okay. uh, Safdie, one of the Safdie brothers. Okay. And it is so cringe worthy if you like cringe television mm-hmm. then this is like you cannot miss the curse mm, might be paramount okay. one of the streaming services that uh, some people don't have so i don't think enough people are watching okay. it right now but it is really really cringe the it's this about this husband and wife emma stone and nathan fielder okay. and they are trying to do good in a community and they keep finding themselves in these predicaments where they end up looking like complete jerks okay. and it's very funny um so definitely that one all as right. well i'll give you those those two for this week oh, okay so two this week all right thank you guys for um did you watch the show i recommended to you no, no, which no. one what one was it i can't remember you i did, say, you did, say, I did yeah. recommend i think you were in baston at the time he said i can't remember yes yeah, so you can't even remember important. your own recommendation then why should i well i don't have yeah, a true. lot that was a harsh way to put it i have a sure. lot going How about on me? my brain i call the guy an asshole on stage yeah, and you're like, ah, no, yeah. I love how right. younger you, you like, wouldn't have taken that back. That wouldn't have been a, a take back. But you're like, I, why did I call you? Yeah, I loved you. Said I set you up for it. So I'm, yeah. yeah I, was was like, I said I called the guy an asshole, and then I was like, that's a dickhead thing to do. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I you answered exactly how I wanted to you, you two, and yet I called you an asshole. Oh, the new Perry Mason. Oh yes. Mm-mm. No. You gotta well, watch. There's something it. else, by the way. 
There's something else that. Well, what, I, I can give you more recs. You want some? Go ahead. All right, let's do it. I'm pulling. I'm pulling up my TV show. Go, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Every time Roxy tells a joke. Yeah. Now. Oh no, that will make me so nervous. Uh, okay. <laughs> let's go to. Oh, so Golden Bachelor had its finale. Did you guys check it's, out anything no, from Golden Bachelor? No, but it's so well. My my one of my one of my aunt's friends is was on it. From, and oh, so she was in the one in the balloon. Did you watch? The oh, show? I didn't you watch, watch any of it. So, but I my, heard my that aunt... his past is not exactly oh, what he really? was well, uh, okay. Is well, that my, true? I don't know. I yeah, there's some art. My mom sent no, me an article exists. about no, like uh, he the stories he told were embellished. Like, yeah, like. Well, he, my aunt, my aunt was like, "You gotta watch it. You gotta watch it." My friend, she's she's like, she's just like me. So I can only imagine. Did you watch it? Yeah, of she course. Was the, she was the one in the balloon. Yeah. So she's exactly like about as New about. York as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, all, Did she win? I don't want to spoil it for people because it just oh. just mm. dropped. What did she did she make it far? If the it's a person there? I think it, the balloon? that you're talking about, then balloon. yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Okay. Um so it is very, very good. It is but the stakes are so much higher than normal bachelor because Why? Because they're going to die soon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, because these people are in their seventies and a lot of them feel like this is their last chance at love. And so the the people who aren't getting picked, you feel (laughs) like on the bachelor, when you're watching these 24 year olds not get picked, you're like, Oh, who 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 cares? cares? You have a beautiful life ahead. Right. When they're bawling and then they're like, this is the last chance I ever loved. Right. That's, yeah, that drives me When crazy. you're 75 and you're like, this is, this is I, my last I'm, shot. In, yeah. I'm in love with this you ain't, person. You ain't lying. It yeah. is really, and especially because some of these women were it's so point. beautiful in it's their a good souls. Point. It just felt so much sadder. Yeah. And and he feels that too. The bachelor yeah, feels that. Great point. And so it, the stakes were very, very high. The person who did win, what I will say is that it's not who I would have picked if mm. I was him. But I do think that they make the best match. Okay. And so I think right. that it's a really good fit. They're getting married on TV in January. Okay. Well, if you look at the cases of sexually transmitted disease and um, um, in, in, no, in uh, assisted living, oh. uh, you'd totally. know that there are more chances at love in your age. Really? I mean, they, oh, yeah. they, did, uh, they did fantasy suites and they knocked boots. Yeah. I, I guess if I was in one of those places and I could, you know, Gladys yeah, wanted a little. You got to oh. wrap it up though, because STDs at that age can be super serious. Sure, and they really can take you yeah. out. Yeah, for real, make you go blind and stuff. Yeah. How did How did Leo go out? Fucking. Yeah, you know. Yeah, what do you do? Okay, oh, one sorry. more one that I wanted to talk to you. Pull guys that diaper to the side, baby. <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about this because you guys know I usually watch different. I cannot. Pull the diaper to the side. I heard it. I heard it. I heard him pulling the diaper to the side. Hey, good for them. <laughs> What's going on, Rox? What do we Give got? Give them some decency. It's called Depends. Depends. Oh, come on, Rox. So I watched a stand-up special that I wanted to know if you guys watched, which is Natural Selection, which was Matt Rife's. Now, I knew you were going to bring that up. So Steph said something today that I didn't know. I've never seen a single second of his stand-up. But uh, um, but he he was discovered from the internet? What does that mean? He is extremely TikTok successful okay. like mm-hmm. you know he did, did an excellent job of clipping out his bits mm-hmm. and putting them online and then they blew the f okay. up and uh they really blew up to the point where everyone i know like all my sister and her younger friend yeah. they all know him okay. and they don't know stand-up comedians right, right, at all right. he's like kind of a tiktok comedian okay and his whole thing is that he hates social media but that's what made him famous so it's it. kind of this double-edged sword uh, was Steph saying it like no. so that she was just no? We were talking about um, social media and just things because Jamie Costa was on yesterday and we were oh. talking about just how you know you can find like look Jamie was was found from TikTok yeah. and all that stuff too mm-hmm. and and she's like you look at Matt Reif and he's a he's a social media comedian and I was like I didn't know that because like again I don't have anything against the guy I just never I saw a couple of his clips and just it wasn't wasn't for me so I was like I didn't really watch any of his stuff but it, how's this special. He also kind of blew up on social, too, because a lot of people think that he's gotten a lot of work done, and he claims he hasn't, and all okay. these doctors on social keep how posting that they've done work. He's got very big lips and, like, different – it's less about but, how but old how, he looks. Yeah, okay. I, I think he's 27. And why would he have – I don't know, but it's just – it's another thing on the internet okay. that's kind of made him famous. Right. And he's an so, attractive comedian, which is, you know, not – Do you find him attractive? <laughs> Uh, no. Yeah. I think that he, he's, he's got funny, so everybody who's look. funny is at least baseline a little attractive, but he... Oh, no. Louis Anderson was... But when you're funny, you're funny. He, so, but the problem was that he put out a set that, or he put out a special, and he opens with a domestic violence joke, and so people... Oh, yeah, I saw that. ...were I saw, really, I, really yeah. upset about that. I'm going to be 100% honest. I didn't think it was that 
bad. I mean, I just didn't think that he was really. It wasn't the craziest joke I've ever yeah. heard. No, but that's the whole point. We did talk about this. We've talked about this story, even though I haven't seen the joke. It's like you didn't see the joke. No, I didn't see the joke, so I can't. So I can't say whether or not I thought it was funny or not. He's but, talking about somebody at the front of the house, yeah. and he says that that person was a that woman had a black eye, and he's like, "That's the best you can do to introduce people to your restaurant or something." Right. And and, like, whether you think it's funny or not, the com- like, We talked about this on Clatter Live. You have the right in. There's two things you have the right to. You have the right to tell whatever joke you want to do. You also have the right to be offended by it. Mm-hmm. But to try to get somebody canceled because of it or try to get their show off the air, it's a fucking joke. And it's like, and it's not. He also didn't focus his whole set on TV. Like it it wasn't, it didn't strike me as similar to the conversations around Chappelle with the, um, like going after the trans community where he continues to do. And again, that's not me saying that I think Chappelle should be canceled. I think he's one of the funniest comedians of all time. But it it didn't seem similar to that. It was one joke at the top. So I was kind of It was insensitive and people don't like the fact that he's being insensitive. And it's like, he's a comedian. He's a comedian. Comedians yeah. are insensitive. Like I actually Brett thought some it. of the special was pretty funny. But okay. But you like you liked it? I like him. And okay. I thought that it was some of it was pretty funny. I, some of it wasn't that funny. He's like the new and, Dane Cook, right? Is that kind of like the way you look uh, at it A now? little bit, yeah. yeah okay. And the, the parts that aren't funny, uh, then I feel like you're not doing your job fully. So it's yeah. not like it was the funniest special I've ever seen, but the parts that were funny. He kind of reminds me of Dane Cook and Pete Davidson had a kid. Okay. And doesn't he kind of take a, a stab at people that say that all he's known for is doing his crowd work? Does, it, doesn't it end with like a mic drop kind of a situation or is that another clip but I saw? Not, but people didn't seem mad about that. People. Well, no, it, it was like, but he goes, it's, he's like, what do I know? I'm just a crowd work guy or whatever. Yeah, because yeah. that's most of his stuff you see on, on TikTok, Instagram okay. and TikTok and whatever. Yeah, he does do a lot of crowd work uh, and he does and pull a lot. But a lot of the TikTok comedians or whatever you want to call them do that. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a few. And like I said, I'm no, I'm nothing against Matt Ruff. I just never watched anything to where I thought was funny. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that I that he's not funny. It's just I haven't seen anything that I've gone, oh, I got to watch this guy. Like right now, to me, Bill Burr is is the king. Like he, he's He the, really is. He's the king. Um, he is just so laugh out loud funny. He, Everything fearless, he says. as we were talking about before. Did you like fearless. his movie? I did like his movie a lot. I did too. It, I got, did a lot. it got blasted. I of thought of course it, was it funny. did because it's because it, it because it became people. political. It became political for people, and it's it's a funny movie. And I have no shame in saying yeah, I, I laughed funny too. a lot. Me too. I had an I had a conversation with somebody yesterday. We were like, uh, well, you know, comedians are supposed to like not take. Uh, they're supposed to be able to be self deprecating. I was like, the character gets himself in, into trouble every five minutes and says things that he can't keep his mouth shut and right. gets into a lot of trouble. I don't think he looked like the hero in that at all. At all. No. Um, this is my favorite. I can never say his last Nate or... Bagazzi. Bagazzi okay, or whatever. Is he good? Oh, God. It's really good. I may have to watch. So I, good. I also gotta, I'm also not as tuned in um, as I used to be, you know, but I would love to... I would love to check out. I would love to see that guy's funny too, but like some of the TikTok comedians and things, I do see a lot of crowd work stuff. Um, and it's like, there's, there's a few, like the one I'll tell you who's really good at crowd work and also is a very funny comedian is a friend of mine is Adam Ray. Adam Ray is, he does, he, he kind of does this, he does a character where he actually uh, dresses up as, as Dr. Phil and he interviews people at the comedy store. Okay, like, he, did, yeah. he did like, um, he just had Andrew Santino and, um, and, uh, Bobby Lee on. He's had, he's had Bill Burr on. He's really funny. Adam Ray, R-A-Y. And he's an actor too. And he's, we've had him on Schmoes. I should have him on this show. Um, I have one that I love that I, I always forget his name. There's I one kid that I know that I see, and I and again I'm not going to mention his name, but like um, I see him and it clips pop up all the time, and I keep telling YouTube to stop recommending me because <laughs> I can't. He, all he does is yell. All he does <laughs> is yell at people, and it's like and he's and his voice kind of annoys me. So I'm like I can't I can't do it. I can't find the one that I want to tell you guys about. I will okay. next week. He's super funny. It'd be fun, hilarious if it's the one I'm saying that I don't watch. No, he doesn't yell, so no, okay. I can't imagine this that guy that's yells who all it would the time. be. Anyway, look, uh, we we talked about a lot and talked about nothing. So <laughs> thank you for joining us today on the show. I love shows like this. I love the, the Thursday shows where we can just actually have the conversation too, and then we couple it up by Capes and Cows tomorrow with myself and Coy and Winston will be back. Uh, you check out the show with myself, Jamie Costa, and Steph Sabra yesterday. That was a really good conversation. Tuesday's been the UFO shows, and then Monday's just me doing a, a live one. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for our wonderful sponsors. Roxy, where can they find you? Everywhere at Roxy Stryer. Go rent Always Lola or buy it all places VOD. Brett Sheridan? Every, I'm everywhere, everywhere, all at once. Okay, and nothing. Yeah, and about nothing, that, nothing. How about that? How about the channel that you're on? Oh yeah, I'm on Above Board TV. I got some stuff should should be dropping soon. Some of all the stuff from New York that I shot. Great. And then I'm on I'm on here, 
And and uh, yeah, I'm on uh, some new antidepressants, so uh, you know everything's good. The best promoter <laughs> in the business. Thanks for joining us, guys. Subscribe to the I channel. I brought people to the show. You did. Look up there. Hit that button. Speaking of the show, uh, like I said, as soon as Flapper sends me the show, it'll be available on Patreon. So join today, patreon.com slash the big thing show. We're trying to really build up those numbers to try to keep doing more things here so I can try to get that freaking computer eventually so we can stop with these glitching. So if you're able to and you can support the, the show either that way or get one of our sponsors, it does help. So thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you. We'll see you on the flip side. Bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sam Morrell. That's his name. Boop, boop.